Hi everybody, this is Sam Carey from the New Ed Tech Classroom. And this is my fourth video in a six part series about how to take a strategic approach to technology integration. In the first video in this series, I argued that in order to meet the historic moment we currently find ourselves in and continue to provide our students with a high quality education, as well as actually build upon our instructional practices, we need to ensure that we are strategically integrating technology into our curriculums. And then in the second video, I argued that a critical first step is to take a goals first approach to technology to ensure that we're using it in meaningful ways with our students. And in the last video, I argued that perhaps the most critical component of effectively integrating technology is learning how to logically sequence our tech integrated lessons. But of course, in order to fill out the bigger picture, some questions still remain. So in this video, I'm going to lay out my entire blueprint for how I believe you should strategically approach fully integrating technology into your curriculum. And before we launch in, I just want to clarify that all these steps are steps I would recommend we take irrespective of whether or not we're teaching entirely online in a blended learning situation or in person. I truly believe that fully integrating technology into our curriculums is going to better help us achieve our educational goals, and it's going to better prepare our students for the future. Technology integration in our curriculums is undeniably the future of education. So let's look at a strategy for how you could do it. There are seven steps in this blueprint. The first step is to determine our technology integration goals. Here, we need to identify what we seek to achieve through the use of technology. In the second video, I argued how we could use technology to teach relevant 21st century skills in the four C's. But now let's look at some additional goals you might want to consider when integrating technology. First, we can use technology to make our lessons more accessible, regardless of whether or not the teaching happens in person or online. Then we can use technology to create interactive lessons and assess understanding. Technology tools also help us assign personalized interactive content to our students. And as I've already mentioned, we can use technology to teach relevant 21st century skills and provide authentic learning experiences for our students. And we can also use technology to teach digital literacy skills as well as digital citizenship skills. Lastly, we can use technology to build metacognition and self-efficacy skills in students. I'm not suggesting that this is a comprehensive list of all of our technology integration goals, but if you were to use technology to implement these goals, you'd be on the path toward transforming your classroom. Step two is to match tech tools to our identified goals. Here, I'm going to suggest some tools that match these goals. And although it's not meant to be a comprehensive list of all the tools you should use, selecting from some of these programs would be a great place to start. For the first goal, making lessons accessible in person or online, we'll need to look at some learning management tools such as Google Classroom, Schoology, Canvas, or potentially even Seesaw. Then you'll also need to select a way that you're going to deliver your lessons so that they're accessible. This could mean creating lessons in Google Slides or PowerPoint. In order to create interactive lessons that assess students' understanding throughout a lesson, we can use tools that will make our slides interactive like Pear Deck or Nearpod. We can use quiz games and formative assessment tools like Quizzes, Kahoot, and GoFormative so that we're getting constant feedback about what our students understand. And we can use interactive whiteboard programs like Jamboard and Explain Everything. To assign students personalized interactive content, we can assign students differentiated text through programs like Newzella and Actively Learn. We can use a program like Nearpod that has not only interactivity tools, but also huge archives of content. And we can chunk video content so that it becomes interactive by using programs like Edpuzzle. And in order to teach 21st century skills to our students and provide them with authentic learning experiences, we can incorporate creativity apps, such as Adobe Spark Post for graphics, video, and web page design, Book Creator for eBooks, and Soundtrap for audio production and podcasting. And we can encourage different forms of collaboration with programs like Padlet and Flipgrid. We can also build our students' digital communication skills by connecting them with classrooms and educators around the world using programs like Skype EDU and Nat Geo Explorer. And to teach digital literacy and digital citizenship skills, Common Sense already has pre built digital citizenship lessons, and Google's Applied Digital Skills program helps students learn foundational tech skills by applying them in authentic contexts. Lastly, we can help students build metacognition and self-efficacy skills by having them track their own progress toward meeting learning targets in a Google Sheet. And we can use digital portfolio programs like Seesaw to have students reflect on their work 
and explain what they learned. And then with screen recorder programs like Loom, students can also walk through the process of explaining their thinking while they're performing activities on the computer. Step three is a critical component of an effective tech integrated classroom, and that's to digitize our curriculum and use a learning management system. Regardless of whether or not we are teaching remotely or fully in the classroom, learning management systems help us achieve our goal of making lessons more accessible. It's critical that we post all lessons, assignments, and course materials to our learning management systems so that students and families can dependably access everything they'll need in one place. The fourth step is what I showed you in the third video, which is how to strategically sequence lessons. As I mentioned, there are several variations of ways you can do this, but a strategy that has worked well for me is to use the five E's lesson planning sequence in combination with the four C's for 21st century learning. In that video, I showed how to strategically sequence lessons that built skills in the four C's in service of a content-based learning target. In this case, students were learning to use multimedia tools to show what they learned about theories of how the pyramids in Egypt were built. So I'm not gonna go over this in great detail again since I already covered it in the third video, but just as a reminder, in the engage phase, students were making predictions about how the pyramids were built using Pear Deck. Then in the explore phase, students watched an ed puzzle video about the pyramids and made observations using Nearpod's virtual reality tool. In the explain phase, students created an instructional video in Flipgrid to explain different theories of how the pyramids were built to their peers. And then in the elaborate phase, students created an explanatory webpage with Adobe Spark to show what they've learned. Then lastly, in the evaluate phase of the lesson, students viewed their peers' web pages and left feedback for each other on Padlet. Now that we've matched tools to help us achieve goals as well as strategically sequence lessons, step five is to select our instructional method. Here, we'll want to continue to match instructional practices to our educational goals. So for example, some activities might be better suited for interactive whole group lessons where you would be using interactivity apps for engagement and formative assessment. On the other hand, for some lessons, it might be better to create dynamic, personalized, independent studies by creating hyperdocs and menu boards that allow us to provide choice and autonomy to our students. And then there are going to be situations where it's going to make the most sense for us to make video tutorials for our students to provide them with asynchronous instruction. And this can be an ideal strategy, especially when teaching students new technology programs. And in other situations, we'll want to use peer-to-peer -peer teaching so that students can teach each other and build collaboration and communication skills in the process. Now, let's return to the 5E's lesson plan. And in addition to looking at tech integrated activities for each phase of the lesson, we're also going to overlay instructional methods that will best help achieve the individual goals of the activities. So for the engage phase when students were making predictions using Pear Deck, that might be best implemented using interactive whole group instruction. And in the explore phase, when students were watching Edpuzzle videos and looking at virtual reality through Nearpod, it would probably make sense for me to make a video tutorial explaining to them what to do and potentially giving them a menu board of choices for different sources they could look at. In the explain phase, when students are creating instructional videos and teaching peers, we could start with interactive whole group instruction to make sure that they understood what to do and then move into peer-to-peer -peer instruction when they're actually explaining to each other the different theories. For the elaborate phase, when students are working independently to create an Adobe Spark web page, it would probably make the most sense for me to make a video tutorial to teach them how to make that web page and then send them off on their own to do their work. And lastly, when students come back together and view each other's web pages to leave each other feedback, it would make sense to come back as a whole group and have an interactive whole group activity. Step six is to swap in new tools, strategies, and skills. Here you'll want to start to look for ways that you can integrate digital literacy skills, digital citizenship skills, advanced technology skills, tools to build skills in the four C's, or just anything you haven't tried yet. So now let's return again to our template for the 5E's lesson plan plus the 4C's for 21st century learning. And we're going to look at the same exact learning target, but this time we're going to start to swap in new tools, strategies, and skills. So in the engage phase to build student skills and communication, we could have them use smartphones to take their own images of inventions in their own homes and then post images and predictions about how they were invented on an interactive whiteboard like Jamboard. 
Then in the explore phase, we can build student skills and critical thinking by having them analyze social liability based on a common sense digital citizenship lesson plan and then post annotated reliable sources about what they learned to walk it. And in the explain phase when building skills and collaboration, this time we could have students connect with another class via Skype EDU to teach each other about what they're both learning about ancient Egypt. And then in the elaborate phase when students are creating something to show what they've learned, they could create a podcast episode in Soundtrap speaking from the perspective of an Egyptian worker who built the pyramids. And lastly, in the evaluate stage, students could work on communication skills as well as metacognition skills by reflecting upon their learning and uploading their final projects into their digital portfolios in Seesaw. Now, I showed you this to illustrate a point about swapping in new tools, strategies, and skills, but in reality, until we built up our toolkit, we're probably not actually going to be doing a wholesale overhaul of all of the different programs that we use over the course of a lesson sequence. Instead, if we return to this original lesson, it's more likely that we'll actually just end up repeating the same apps for mostly the same purpose over and over again for a while until students and teachers become accustomed to using them. Then when you determine that you and your students are ready, what you can do is swap in a new activity for one segment of this lesson sequence. Then over time, you can continue to swap in and out different types of tools and activities, as well as adding complexity and rigor to your tech integrated lessons. And then the last step is for us to get feedback, reflect, and adjust. Here, we're going to give students and family surveys to see what they think about what we've been doing in class. And of course, you can also use your own observations to determine the success of your tech integration plan. And then lastly, we'll want to look at our actual academic data to determine whether or not our plan is working and actually helping students meet learning goals. And we'll be in a constant cycle of revision, making adjustments as needed. So that's the 7-point 21st century classroom blueprint. First, identify your technology integration goals. Then, match tech tools to those goals. The third step is to digitize your curriculum and use a learning management system. The fourth step is to strategically sequence lessons, and then you'll want to select an appropriate instructional method to help you achieve your goals. After you have your basic foundation established, you'll want to start swapping in new tools, strategies, and skills to add new layers of complexity to your tech integrated plan. And the last step is that we're going to get feedback, we're going to reflect on what we did, and we're going to make adjustments as needed. As we look toward planning for a school year, unlike any other we've ever experienced, let's make sure that we're leveraging technology tools strategically to ensure that we're continuing to do our best to provide students with a high quality education that they deserve. There is absolutely no doubt that this upcoming school year is going to be incredibly challenging. Many of our students are still going to struggle just with simple access to a device and reliable access to the internet. And without a lot of guidance about how to prepare for distance learning or blended learning, it's easy to feel really overwhelmed and stressed out. In spite of all the barriers and difficulties, there are still tangible strategies that we can put in place when students are in front of us in person or on a computer to ensure that when we're using technology, we're using it in the most effective way possible. And you do not have to do it all at once. You can start slowly and start step by step, but the key is to make sure you have the right foundation in place and then continue to build upon that foundation as both you and your students continue to develop new skills. I'm going to continue to post weekly videos on this channel in order to support teachers with implementing a strategic plan to technology integration. And for those who are also interested in taking a deep dive into looking at the bigger picture strategy for every piece you need to have in place in order to strategically integrate technology, I would also encourage you to sign up for my 21st Century Classroom online course. In the course, I'll be providing you with pre-made resources that you can take, edit, and use as you'd like. You'll also have access to exclusive tutorials about every single program that's covered in the course. And you'll even get first access to a YouTube channel that I'm building in the background that's exclusively for student education technology tutorials. I'm literally pouring every single thing I know about technology integration into this course and trying to make it as plug and play as possible in order to ensure that you have all the resources you're going to need to be successful. 
You'll also have closer access to me to get your questions answered throughout the duration of the eight-week course, and there's going to be some more on that to come soon. So if all this sounds interesting to you, make sure you get your name on the early bird wait list. You can do that by entering your name and hitting the submit button, and that will put your name on the list, and that will allow you to secure your spot a full day before the course opens to the general public. And if you're just here to watch my tutorials for free on YouTube, that is totally cool too. I'm glad you're here and I'm looking forward to sharing ideas together about how to meet this challenging moment in education with our best foot forward. In the next video in the series, I'm going to be sharing a little bit more about my own personal story with technology integration. And I think some of what I'm going to share in that video is going to surprise you. So stay tuned. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.